Anyway, let's get back to uh, integration by parts. I hope everybody, you know, eventually you will all remember the integration by parts formula. Integral u dv is uv minus integral v du. And we did several examples last time. I have some for you all to try this time, but maybe I'll refresh your memory about how to choose the u and the v. So the basic idea is you choose u to be something that gets better, <coughs> or at least not worse when you do the derivative. So good choices for the u. The best choice for the u is typically a polynomial part. So like polynomials, because a polynomial always gets simpler when you take the derivative, the, uh, the degree decreases. Um, or something like, uh, actually, I, I left this out of the list last time. I wrote a similar list last time. The natural log um, or the other logs, they work well for this because it's, you know, the log is a weird thing by itself, but when you take the derivative, it turns into x to the minus 1, which, which is generally easier to handle. Um, or something like e to the x or something like sine and cosine. I don't mean divided here sine x and cosine x, right? Those ones don't really get simpler when you take the derivative, but at least, <laughs> at least they don't get worse, right? They, they kind of stay like they are, all right? So you choose the u to be something that gets better when you do the derivative. Better, I mean, it gets simpler. Um, and then you choose the, the dv to be something which gets simpler when you do the antiderivative. So choose dv to be something that gets better or simpler or at least not worse, not worse when we do the antiderivative. Antiderivative. And this typically would be something like e to the x, not the natural log. And polynomial usually is not a good choice for the dv because you increase the, the uh, degree of a polynomial. Um, ln of x uh, is not something you want to take the integral of, so don't, don't use that for the dv. Uh, sine and cosine also are decent choices for the dv. All right, these are the general principles that we talked about last time. Um, let's, uh, let's just try one more example, and then I have some for you all to try. Sorry we didn't get to you all trying some last time, but we did uh, a few examples. This one that I want to do is a little bit weird, although not, not terribly weird. The integral of the natural log. It turns out you can do this integral by using the integration by parts. You're, you know, when I see this, my knee-jerk reaction is, isn't that 1 over x? But it's not. It's the, the integral of 1 over x is ln x. The integral of ln x is something that we've never talked about. But actually, you can do this by uh, using integration by parts. This is a slightly weird example because there's really only one part here, uh, and it is the ln x. You can choose the other part to be 1. So I think of this as ln x times 1, and then that, that 1 is going to be one of my uh, parts. So anyway, I have to choose the u and the dv, and I want to choose the u to be a part which I like to take the derivative of, and the dv to be a part which I like to take the integral of. and so. For that reason, I should definitely pick u as ln x, because I like to take the derivative of that. It becomes 1 over x. I do not like to take the integral of that. So I put it in the u part. And then the dv has to just be like 1 dx. Remember, the dx is always part of the dv. This is a little strange, but sometimes you do actually want to use 1 if there just aren't any other uh, parts to pick from. All right, next. Uh, next thing to do is to figure out what is the du and what is the v. So this u, I take the derivative and I get du and it is 1 over x dx. You always include dx as part of the du. And then this dv, I take the antiderivative. Uh, so what's that going to be? Just x. Yeah. 
So V <coughs> is x. Great. That's the antiderivative of 1 dx. The integral of 1 dx is just x. OK. And now we can plug all of this into my integration by parts formula. It's uv minus integral v du. Right? That's what we're looking for. Sorry, this yeah. is a little bit off topic, but I'm just wondering. Yeah. If you try to redo something like a, like a problem and right. you get it worse, it doesn't go down, right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can't go back down. Uh, you also don't add up your scores. So, you, like, if you get a one and then another one, they don't add up the two. <laughs> you stay at, of course, yeah, you stay at one. Yeah, you don't, your score will not go down. All right? That means in this class, actually, no test can ever screw your grade. Every time you take a test, it, it can make your grade go down. Isn't that great? Kind of. Yeah. Yes? Can you not make up the topics from before the midterm? Oh, you can. Yeah, the midterm includes everything, and then the final exam also includes everything, like even stuff before the midterm. And on all quizzes after the midterm, you can still try the old ones again. Yeah, so the midterm is just basically like a giant quiz where I give you the whole class period to, to do it, and you, you don't have to tell me which old ones you want. You can try them all. Any other business questions? I know it's a weird system. I hope I hope it makes sense to everybody. Uh, did that list go around to everybody? Are you still still working on it? Okay. Anyway, can we finish this guy here? U V minus integral V D U. So uh, I have already computed all the little pieces. So U is L N X times V is X, right? Minus integral V is X. DU is 1 over x dx. All right. Now, uh, as always, when you're doing integration by parts, we still have an integral to do, but hopefully this integral is easier to do than what we started with. And you should typically simplify uh, the integral before you try to do it. So this ln x times x, I don't know about you. I, I like to write it that way. x ln x is the same thing. Uh, what can we do to simplify the integral? Yeah, x and times 1 over x will cancel. So it's just integral of 1 dx. Or just integral of dx. All right? And then uh, do the integral. So this x ln x stays like it is. Do the integral. Integral of 1 is x. So it's like that. This is my final answer. Yeah? Um, do we have to put the plus c like in parentheses? Is the plus c being subtracted by the first? Uh, uh, the answer is. It doesn't really matter, uh, but this is a good thing. So, like technically, if you want to be super, super careful about everything, you may think, shouldn't I do it like that? Because the integral of one dx is x plus c, and there's a minus sign way out front. Everybody else get the paper? Oh, all right. Needs to come back here. Um, the reason. So this is also correct. The reason it doesn't really matter is because c. C represents any constant. And so if I write that, this is the same, you know, if you distribute the minus sign, <coughs> it's the same as that. What I had written before was this. Oops, there's an X there. X ln X minus X plus C. Now these two look different. For ordinary numbers, they would be different. But since C represents any constant, they're the same because if I say subtract any constant, that's the same as adding any constant because the constant could be negative. So more over here. All right. Great. So this is integration by parts. This is actually an interesting formula. It doesn't come up very often, but you will, you will see this written down in sort of a typical box in a calculus book with a list of formulas. I would not expect you to memorize this, but this is a true fact. The integral of the natural log is x ln x minus x plus c. I think everybody got the paper now. Is that right? All right, thanks. All right, uh, as promised, I got some for you all to try. So I have three here, although one of them is kind of a trick question. I will let you think about which one. <coughs> x over e to the 4x is one integral x ln x and 
integral x root x squared plus 1. All right, see what you think about those. For that first one, e to the 4x, just to... Um, Uh, I don't know if we talked specifically about this. There is a general uh, formula for the integral of e to the kx. Of course, if it's just e to the x, the answer is e to the x. But if it's e to the kx, the answer, the effect of that k is to do this. So uh, when you're, this is sort of a little pro tip for dealing with e to the 4x. All right, see what you think. Chat with your friends if you like. I'll see how you're doing. I would suggest first change the first one into multiplication. Integration by parts is only meant for multiplication. So if you see a fraction, you should rewrite it as a multiplication. This is 
I know uh, folks are not quite done yet, but um, these are a little involved, as you can see. And I have um, a couple more sort of slightly weirder ones to try out also after this. But um, the first one, people, for the most part, ended up settling on. So first of all, because I intend to use the integration by parts, you got to write it in terms of multiplications. And I think this is the most sensible way or the, the nicest way to write this as a multiplication. And then the uh, appropriate choices for the u and dv is I'm going to use u as x, dv is e to the minus 4x. That means du will just be 1 dx. And v will be the integral of e to the minus 4x, which this is why I told you that thing in the box. It is 1 over minus 4 e to the minus 4x plus C. Well, it's not helpful to put the plus C in there. I'm going to put the plus C in at the very end. So what I get here is um, UV, that is X times 1 over minus 4 e to the minus 4X. That's UV minus integral V is this. DU is just 1 DX. All right. Uh, and now we have to continue uh, it's it's uh, good to keep in mind like this part right here you don't need to do anything else with uh, what your what you should be focused on is this over here because I still have an integral sign that I have to deal with but this is sort of just gonna stay that way until the end so um, this first part maybe just to beautify this a little bit I'll put the constant in front but this this really nothing's gonna happen with that Next, I want to simplify the integral. What I should do is I can pull the constant outside. So uh, 1 fourth can come out, and these minus signs will cancel a little bit. And then it's going to be integral e to the minus 4, and then times uh, 4x. Times 1, of course, doesn't matter. So it's just like that. And then I'm going to use the thing in the box again, the thing which is almost scrolled out the top. So this is 1 over minus 4x e to the minus 4x plus 1 fourth, and then the integral again, 1 over minus 4 e to the minus 4x, <coughs> like that, plus c. As I was going around, pretty much everybody uh, ended up with that. Anybody got questions about that? This is how we do it. Yes? Did you just multiply that 1 fourth there to make it 1 over negative 16? Sure, yeah, as I was going around most Let's be honest, most people did that because of your animal urge to simplify. I, I, don't, uh, I don't really care about that, but if you want to, go for it. Smoke them if you got them, as they say. All right, that's, uh, that's that one. Let's try x, ln, x. This one is a little strange because you have to make your choice in a way that kind of violates my general principles. But to make this one work out, you should choose u to be x and dv no, the other way. U to be ln x and dv to be x. Usually you don't want dv to be x because then the v is more complicated. The v uh, is going to be 1 half x squared, which is a little weird. Uh, but the reason is because the du is going to get a lot simpler. So these are how these should have gone when you made your choices. If you chose them the other way around, uh, you will have plugged into the integration by parts format and then realized that the integral actually got more complicated instead of simpler. So that's a good sign that you should you probably have made the wrong choice and you should go back and try again. Anyway, when I use the formula, it's uv minus integral v du, which is ln x times v is 1 half x squared minus integral v 1 half x squared times du is 1 over x. All right, so that's what you get after doing the integration by parts formula. 
Uh, let's try and, now what remains is to do that integral. We should try to simplify it first as much as possible. So this, just to uh, rearrange a little bit. Um, how do we simplify? I would take the one half out first of all, and then integral. What remains inside the integral? X. x. Yeah, it's just x squared times one over x, but those there you can cancel there, simplify, and it's just going to be x, right? And then I do the integral, and we'll be done with it. One half, uh, one half x squared, right? That's that. It seemed like most people made it there eventually. You will see it's kind of a theme. Often these problems involve sort of doing the same integral twice. Like, uh, you know, this one I did this, this integral of e to the minus 4x uh, two times. All right, and the last one. I don't, did anybody uh, get to this last one? Anybody have any tricky, tricky thoughts? I said one of these is kind of a trick. This is it. What did you? Yeah, this one you cannot do using integration by parts. And so this is sort of uh, something to keep in mind. This one must use a u substitution. How, what, how exactly did you do it? Um, my u was x squared plus 1. Yeah, great. I don't think we need to go through all the details of this, but that's the u. The du would be 2x dx. And then this integral here becomes integral of square root of u times 1 half du. And then I will say, etc. So the moral of the story is, when you see multiplication inside the integral, that's a tip off that you might have to do parts. But actually, it's not always going to be parts. If you see multiplication inside the integral, sometimes that indicates that you need to do a u substitution. And so these are just two different tricks to use. And it's not always obvious which one is appropriate for, for each, given, uh, each given integral. All right. Great. Any remaining questions about that? All right, I got two slightly weirder examples. Um, and now I'm beginning to feel like we might not get to the next section today. I thought we would. That's all right. Two slightly weirder examples. And you'll see what, uh, what happens each time. This first one that is not all that weird. I mean, it, it is slightly weird, but really not, not much of a problem. 7x squared times e to the x dx. Let's try this integral. Uh, let's, you know, no, uh, no funny business to start with. Let's just try to choose the parts. It's a little weird there's a 7 in here. You could just take the 7 all the way out to begin with. But I'm going to use it as one of my parts. So my two parts are going to be 7x squared and e to the x. What do you think? Which one, which one should be the u? 7x squared. 7x squared, yeah. Generally, if you see a polynomial piece, that should be the u. Um, and the dv will be e to the x dx. That means the du, someone has shouted out. What's the du here? 14x. 14x dx, of course. And the v? E to the x. E to the x. Great. Yeah, the integral of e to the x is e to the x. All right. Let's do the formula then. So this is uv minus integral v du. <coughs> That is 7x squared times v is e to the x, okay, minus integral. v du, that is e to the x times du is 14x dx. All right, so this is my integration by parts. Now let's simplify that integral as much as we can and then do the integral. So I leave the, the first thing like it is, minus, I guess we can pull the 14 out, and then what remains is x and e to the x like so. And now we have to do this integral. Any big ideas here? How can we do that integral, x times e to the x? He says, do the integration by parts again, and I agree. <laughs> so this is, so what's weird about this example is, sometimes you gotta do it twice, or you know, even it could be that you got to do it three times. Like if you look, uh, take a moment to reflect on what we started with. We had a polynomial part and an e to the x part. The polynomial was a degree two. After doing the parts one time, now I have a polynomial of degree one. 
with the, with the exponential part. So generally speaking, if you're working with polynomials, every time you do the integration by parts, it decreases the degree by one. But you might have to do it more than once to get it all the way uh, where, where you want it. All right, so I'm going to do parts again. <coughs> Keep doing it till it works, all right? But I feel good about this, I mean, just because of what I just said. The degree is going to decrease by one every time. So if I do it once more, it should this polynomial part should go away entirely. So I'm going to use u equals x, dv is e to the x. Again, choosing u to be the polynomial piece. And then du is 1 dx, v is e to the x. And so plugging in, things get a little confusing now, but right here in big parentheses, I'm going to do the integration by parts formula again, which is uv minus integral v du using, of course, my, my new u's and v's, not the original u's and v's up here. These u's and v's. uv, that's x, e to the x, minus integral v du, that's e to the x times 1 dx. All right, and now we have to do that integral, but this integral is very easy. It's e to the x times 1, which is just e to the x, and the integral of e to the x is e to the x. So this whole thing becomes, it's going to be my final answer here, 7x squared e to the x minus 14, and then parentheses, x e to the x minus e to the x. And I'll put the, I always put the plus c on the outside. You can put the plus e inside those parentheses if you prefer, but it, it doesn't matter. All right, so sometimes you gotta do it twice. That's the moral of the story here. And in fact, sometimes you gotta do it three times, you know, if you start with a cubic. Uh, any, any thoughts about that? This is integration by parts used twice. Great. Uh, my second somewhat strange example, that was the first slightly weird example. My second slightly weird example. Let's try. And I'm going to go all the way down here. How about this? e to the x sine x dx. This one is quite a bit stranger, uh, although it's you know innocent looking at the, to start with. What are we going to choose for the u's and the dv's? I, in this case, I would say actually I don't really feel strongly about either one. You know, the two parts are going to be e to the x and sine x. And e to the x, of course, stays the same whether you do the integral or the derivative. And sine x kind of gives you cosine either way when you, if you're doing the integral or the derivative. So in this problem, actually, it doesn't really matter which one you use for the u's and the v's. But I'm going to, you know, you got to pick something. So I'm going to pick u to be sine x and dv to be e to the x dx. If you choose it the other way around, it'll also work, although the details of your individual steps will be slightly different from mine. You'll get the same answer eventually. But anyway, well, can someone say, what's the du going to be? <coughs> Cosine x dx. And then the v? E to the x. E to the x. Yeah, that's the antiderivative of e to the x dx. OK, so I go uv minus integral v du. This is u is sine x, v is e to the x minus integral, v is e to the x, du is cosine x. All right. Okay. Any thoughts? Yeah? Do it again. Do it again, yeah, not a bad idea. Although, maybe you should have some kind of interpretation in your heart. What do you think is going to happen if we do it again? You're just going to get the same thing again. Yeah. Let, let's just try it, though. It's, it'll be fine. Don't worry. Although you should be worried. Uh, but um, something weird is going to happen, and everything's going to be OK. Um, but you know, if you, if you encounter this by yourself on the playground, you should be a little worried. But I'm, I'm here. It's going to be fine. So I'm going to choose in the same way. u to be cosine x, dv is e to the x, dx. All right. Then my du is, the derivative of that is minus sine x. And the v is, integral of e to the x is e to the x. All right. Let's plug this stuff in. So I have sine x times e to the x minus. And now I put parentheses. And in here goes uv minus integral v du with the new u's and v's. So that says cosine 
x, that's u, v, e to the x minus integral v, e to the x, du is negative sine x. Yes, of course, dx should be part of du. All right. And maybe I'll just simplify this a little bit. I mean, just, just take care of the various minus signs. This says sine x times e to the x minus cosine x times e to the x. And if you distribute all the minus signs, this is now a minus, right? There are three minus signs in there. e to the x times sine x dx. All right. All right. And now is when you should begin to be very concerned that we're just going in circles here, right? What we started with is e to the x sine x, and what we end up with is again e to the x sine x. So why don't we just do it again? I would say now is when you should say, I'm not doing this again, because it didn't, it, uh, you could just do this forever. There is one very sort of uh, cute trick that you can do in this case. Anybody seen this, this sort of a thing before? This is very weird. Maybe I will summarize what we've gotten so far. So what we started with was this, integral e to the x sine x dx. And apparently that equals, can I write the e's first? It doesn't really matter. But this apparently equals e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x minus integral e to the x sine x. Right? That's a, that's a little <coughs> summary of what we've done so far. There is a very simple yet brilliant idea that can finish this all off right now. Actually, we're almost done. Any, uh, any simple but brilliant ideas out there? This is not at all obvious unless, yeah. You just cancel on both sides, the integral. Something about, can we cancel on both sides? Can we do like this? Yeah, actually they don't cancel, but this is even better. They, you can add the one on the right, add it onto both sides. So don't cancel it, but you know, take this and add it over here, right? What it says now is two integral e to the x sine x dx equals that stuff. Eh? Is this good? is good. Now just divide by 2 and that's the answer. All right? No. This is strange. Divide by 2. Integral e to the x sine x dx apparently is, I'll write it as a 1 half. That's it. Very weird. So sometimes when it seems like you're going in circles, that's actually a good thing because you can do this weird trick at the end. All right. Now it would have been a bad thing if that, if this minus here ended up being a plus, then they really would just straight up cancel, and you'd be you'd be nowhere because the thing you're trying to calculate would have disappeared entirely. But because this is a plus and this is a minus, you can add it over here and then solve for for the thing you're looking for. So very uh, very strange, but cute trick. All right. Yes. Like up there when you went from u to du for cosine. Yes. Cosine, yeah. And it's negative sine. Right. Where did the negative go? When you <coughs> so it, it went here. Yeah. And then it was a minus and a minus, but also a minus here, oh. which I distributed. So it ends up being a minus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, I better get that right because this is really the whole, the whole thing only works because this ends up being a minus here. If, yeah. it, if it were a plus, then it would all be messed up. You wouldn't be able to do it. Okay. Wait, so what's the final answer? It's this. And I suppose technically you should put a plus C in here. But yeah, that's the final answer. Very strange. Very cutesy. Very demure. Is that a? I heard it. That's a meme. I don't actually know what it is, but um, sometimes I say it, even though I don't know what it means. <coughs> That's what memes are all about, right? You gotta just pass it along, even if it doesn't make any sense. All right, great.
We have just a few more minutes, and there's actually one last thing to say about integration by parts, which is really not very, um, not very complicated at all, but it is something that we should talk about that we just haven't talked about yet, and that is, what about parts with a definite integral? That is an integral which has you know, the little numbers. Every example we've been doing has been an indefinite integral. So we should talk about how you handle parts with a definite integral. And there's not, there's, you know, it's, there's nothing hard about it really. I would just say, do the whole thing first, then plug in the values at the end. I will say, plug in the values everywhere at the end. And you'll, you'll see what I mean. There's no surprises really, but I just wanted to talk at least once about how to uh, do it when you do have the little numbers to plug in. So I'm going to try the integral 1 to 3 of ln x over x squared. All right, dx. This one I am going to do using the parts. It's a little strange there. Uh, because I intend to use parts, we should write the integral as a multiplication instead of a division. Any suggestions? How should I write it? X to the minus 2, yeah, instead of division by x squared. So I'm going to make it x to the minus 2 ln x like that. All right. And now I'm going to choose my parts. So the u, the dv, what do you think here? You've got two choices, I suppose. Would u be ln x? Yeah, you should choose ln x for the u part because ln x gets simpler when you take its derivative. You don't want to put ln x in the dv uh, column. So the dv must be the other part, which is x to the minus 2. So the du is 1 over x dx. Can anyone say, what's the v going to be? Negative x to the negative 1. Yes, negative x to the negative 1. Yeah, exactly. That's the antiderivative of x to the minus 2. You increase the power by 1 and then divide by the new power. OK, great. So let's do my parts here, uv minus integral v du. And at this point, I'm going to just sort of temporarily forget about the fact that there's a 1 and a 3 in the integration boundaries. But I'm just going to handle that at the very <coughs> end. So it's going to be u is ln x, v is minus x to the minus 1, minus integral v, minus x to the minus 1, du is 1 over x, dx. All right. And as usual, I'm going to do a little simplifying. Simplify as much as you can before trying to do that integral. So this is minus x to the minus 1 ln x. That's just a little rearranging. Uh, of the integral part, we can uh, take a minus sign out and make it a plus integral. What's left over inside when you simplify? Yeah? Yeah, those are both 1 over x. What's the best way to write that? 1 over x squared. Yeah, I'm, I like x to the minus 2 just because we're about to take the integral of that. It's most convenient to do x to the minus 2. All right, and we can do the integral. So this is minus x to the minus 1 ln x plus uh, the integral of that. You increase the power by 1, it becomes x to the minus 1. You divide by another sign. So it's really just minus x to the minus 1. All right, and now. When I would ordinarily put plus C, instead of putting plus C, I do this and plug my values in. All right. So this was, this was the whole point of doing this example. I said the strategy, do the whole thing first, then plug in values everywhere at the end. Now, what I mean by everywhere is these values get plugged in for x across the whole thing, not only on this last bit, which came from the last integral, but you need to plug them in everywhere. That's because the answer of a definite integral, you know, what what this, what this whole problem means, it's supposed to be a number. It's the area under the curve of this function. So you better not have x's left over in the answer. Everything in the answer should just be a number. So I'm going to plug 3 and 1 here in both pieces. So it's minus 3 to the negative 1 ln 3 plus 
minus 3 to the negative 1, and then subtract, plugging in 1, minus 1 to the negative 1, ln 1 plus negative 1 to the negative 1. There you go. And that's my final answer. ln 1 is 0. Otherwise, you can't do much to simplify that. All right. So this is just one last example of a definite integral. You wait until the end and then plug the values in. Any questions about all of that? Yeah? Don't, don't need to completely simplify the one? N no. Answer. I would not simplify any more than that. Yep. If I ever wanted you to, I would say so. <coughs> all right, great. I think that'll do for today. So to, uh, next time we'll do something truly new after the quiz, of course.